So recently I've designed a few little lifting body aircrafts in my CAD program and then 3D printed them. And in this video we're going to see if these things will actually fly. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. It's a new ultra immersive smartphone game that'll definitely have you at the edge of your seat. Check it out through the link in the description. So now let's get started with some awesome lifting body and blended wing aircraft tests. Today we've got these two 3D printed prototype little drop gliders to test out. And these ones were both just kind of test prints, so they're probably going to smash into the ground and blow up and break, but that doesn't really matter because they're both just kind of garbage anyways. So this first one is one that I designed probably a few months ago actually. It's just like a Delta glider. Eventually it'll have a flight controller in here with an FPV camera in the front and some servos back here. 3D printing wings like this is really just amazing what you can do. This one here is a lifting body, basically meaning that it gets lift from the fuselage and not necessarily any wings. Eventually there will be servos in here that are just directly connected to little control surfaces, but for trim purposes I put these little pieces of bendable plastic on there so that I can adjust the trim. But plenty of room for tons of electronics in there. A little FPV camera will go on the front. But yeah, the, the whole point of dropping these without any electronics is just to kind of get one more data point in guessing and checking where the center of gravity should go. This one also has some slots on the bottom that I think might help with yaw stability, kind of like vertical stabilizers, but these uh, don't increase the cross-sectional area looking at it from the side. So I don't really know if they'll help, but it's a good test, kind of fun to play around with. These lifting bodies were um, experimented with back in the 50s or 60s or 70s, I don't know when, but they were considering using them to get astronauts down from space. And people flew in these like wingless aircraft that were dropped from high altitudes and they landed fine. They flew really well actually, so. So we've got the trusty Alta 8 over here and we are going to drop them. The drop mechanism is this simple servo that sticks a push rod through a hole in a piece of wood. Dropping in three, two, one. There it goes. Wow, it flies. Amazing. That worked! So now let's try this guy. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it smashes into the ground, but... Three, two, one. It's tail heavy! Oh! So there's actually very little damage. Yeah, I could definitely try it again. The, oh, it is kind of cracked in half. I'll put some more weight in the front and get the CG a little further forward. Oh, explosion. It definitely looked a little better when it was falling on that one. Look at that infill. So weird. So after that uncontrolled glide test, I installed servos, a flight controller running iNav, and an FPV camera and transmitter. I did seven test flights, each on a different day with a different version of the aircraft. So that goes to show that I spent way too much time on this project. But anyways, the first few flights were either tail heavy or overtuned. The tail heavy flights were just uncontrollable, and the overtuned flights had oscillation. I had one somewhat controlled flight, but that didn't go very well because I started from too low to really get the chance to steer it around. Once I started being able to somewhat consistently control it immediately after release, the vehicle started randomly going into flat spins that were impossible to get out of. 
Some of them really do look so random that it kind of seems like the servo suddenly glitched or something like that. But I do think it's really just aerodynamically stalling and going into a spin. I think larger vertical stabilizers would help with the flat spin issue, but I never got the chance to try it out. So after that, I made some design modifications to hopefully help. The seventh and final test flight turned out to be somewhat successful. Spring has sprung. What a beautiful day. And this time we've got this version, and they're slowly kind of evolving further away from an actual lifting body. But I added some little stubby wings and an extra set of tail fins to this one, and now it's kind of starting to look like a futuristic uh, science fiction spaceship or something like that. So hopefully the extra little tail fins and wings give it enough additional stability to prevent it from going into a spin this time. I also made these grooves a little bit bigger on the bottom. I realized that it was a mistake to print in green since the grass is green and that'll make it really hard to find, so that's why I gave it a blast of gold spray paint. I didn't flare and land softly like I was initially hoping to do, but I did have a little bit of control over the aircraft, all the way down to the ground. And it did prove that the thing does fly. Not well by any means, but it flew. So I don't know if this is technically a lifting body now that it has these stubby little wings, but it sure didn't get all the lift to do what you just saw it do from these stubby little wings alone, I can tell you that much. So there's definitely some lifting body effect going on here. So I'd say it's safe to call it a lifting body. Now as I've learned here from these series of tests, Lifting bodies are not easy to make fly, especially to make glide. The lifting bodies that NASA were building were more successful because, for one, they put a lot more time and effort into tuning their control systems. And I'm sure this is easier to make work at larger scale because of the inherent stability of larger aircraft. But still, these vehicles are naturally very aerodynamically unstable. And a lot of those real lifting body aircraft that were made in the past were actively stabilized and they would have not been able to fly um, it without the active stabilization systems. So this is definitely a challenging project. This project has also been quite resource intensive for uh, PLA filament. Another reason this thing stalls so easily is that it's a tiny plane that weighs a lot. I think one of the versions weighed 1.7 pounds, which is a super high wing loading. There's something really cool about a high wing loading aircraft doing a nice flare right before landing. So I had one decent flight, I'm gonna call it at that. I still really didn't get the chance to do what I initially wanted to do, and that's come out of a dive and then flare up for totally horizontal flight before landing. I had the idea of kind of pulling in the community to help with this project. So if anyone out there wants to design a lifting body type shuttle kind of aircraft, I would definitely print it and fly it if the design excites me enough. I think it'd be cool to make something that's kind of like a mix between this and the blended wing aircraft at the beginning, and just load it up with a ton of weight so that it has to fly super fast. But anyways, if anyone's actually interested in something like this, I'll post some more details in the description. Now another word about the sponsor of this video. I don't play many video games, but when I do, I'm sure to play Raid Shadow Legends. It's the most immersive RPG online phone-based game of the year. Forget everything you think you know about mobile games, because one of the most ambitious RPG projects of 2019 has just been released, and it's going to change everything. Introducing Raid Shadow Legends. Playing Raid is the most immersive experience you'll find on smartphones, and it can really only be compared to the biggest PC and console titles. The game is totally free. It has all the features you'd expect from a brand new RPG title. Amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. I never expected to get this level of performance out of a mobile game. Look how crazy the level of detail is on these champions. Raid is getting big real fast, so get in early. Starting now will give you a huge head start. So go to the description of this video now and download Raid only through my link to get 50,000 silver immediately and a free epic champion, part of the new player program. Thanks again to Raid for sponsoring this video. 
So that's all for this project. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.